Yeah. Next Gen is here. Yeah, yeah. Your console sucks. Jinx. Yeah, 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 they just gotta go with the force So they go get their dual shotgun Control I also got a new way to play Cause Kinect is now totally new Well is that a fact? That may be that In 24 hours We'll break sales and debut With, with us too Roll up to the store With a smart glass in hand Got the Vita Gonna help my brand Now hold up Sony What you diggity doing here? I should diggity just have you banned Then she says Xbox and PS4 Don't forget about Wii U For real? And no more gamers thinking next gen But they forgot about the golden rule Uh-huh, they all say It's about the gameplay Every day It's about the gameplay With three consoles that are getting into the fray Before you go play It's about what you play now, normally I don't play nice with you But tonight is a special exception Great See that's what we're for A console war But it's time to have some console affection Turn on here on the shelves Here on the shelves It's hard to tell So hard to tell How much we'll go for la, la. And whoever will win Here we This rule dates back The golden rule To the 90s Talking about Sega The 64 and the PlayStation The Dreamcast, Dreamcast back, back again. again I've got Titanfall Well, I've got the order At least I have Smash Bros Game set they all say it's about the gameplay every day. It's about the gameplay with three consoles that are getting into the fray. Before you go play, it's about what you play. Gamers, get ready to make it all click. Move the control stick, go move the control stick. Uh, move the control stick. All right. To make it all click, gotta move the control stick. Wow. And all of that was okay Cause it's about the gameplay With that clear that you keep the haters at bay And the graphics matter, that's what they'll say But we'll say it now, no It's the gameplay Yeah, 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 yeah The Golden Rule A middle-aged criminal turned family man Retired after one last score an up-and-coming gangbuster looking to hit the big time. An emotionally unstable meth dealer ravenously expanding his territory. All three men slowly brought together as their stories weave in and out as they take bigger and more ambitious pieces of the pie in the dirty city of Los Santos. Precision planned heists, hot-blooded pursuits, and merciless killings are the steps you'll take and more for the wealth and power you deserve. Crime and sin have a new master. And that master could be you. The third nominee for Show Me Your News Game of the Year. This is Grand Theft Auto V. She's heading up to the stage now. Her many talents include announcing, singing, and also entertaining viewers on her SMYN EV Twitch channel. Everyone, please welcome Rachel. Stop. Pause the game, set your controller down, gather your thoughts, and slow down your breathing. What just happened? What actually just happened? Moments like this in a game don't come along very often.
And most of the time, they're the ones that remind us of what we see in this medium. They're the ones that make our hearts drop, make our adrenaline pump, or even make our eyes widen in awe. Not every game can accomplish a moment like this. It's not an easy thing to do. But when they pull it off, it really becomes something special. The nominees for best moments in a game are... The ending sequence from Bioshock Infinite. We swim in different oceans, but land on the same shore. It always starts with a lighthouse. I, I don't understand. We don't need to. It'll happen all the same. Why? Because it does. Because it has. Because it will. Chapter 10, Renewal, from Fire Emblem Awakening. No reaction. Was I wrong then? Xerneas, or Evaltile, appears from Pokemon XY. <laughs> and Winter, from The Last of Us. We just want to talk. Any sudden moves and I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for Buddy Boy over there. What do you want? Name's David. This here's my friend James. Uh, from a larger group. Women, children. They're all very, very hungry. So am I. Best moment. And the winner is... Bioshock Infinite! It may have been Infinite's big twist that kept everyone talking, but the whole sequence was a masterful whirlwind that didn't stop and kept players guessing. The runner-up was Fire Emblem Awakening. This is a new category this year. Bioshock Infinite is nominated eight times tonight, and this is its second win. Now, we are really excited about this next part of the show, featuring a live performance from- Show me your news! Oh, are you kidding me? We meet again, Nega Scum, and for the last time, I am Sailor Neptune, Champion of Justice! I am Sailor Pluto, Champion of Justice! I am Sailor Mars, Champion of Justice. Wait! I told Seigino! Sera Fukubi Shoujo Senshi! Sera Makuri! No, 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 goddammit! What now? First off, Joe forgot the monologue, and he just went straight to the ending. Did I? My bad. And the rest of you, we can't all just say we're Champions of Justice! Yeah, what the hell? That's a one-person thing. Can you blame us? We're following your example. Seriously, guys, I'm right here. You know, Negaforce from the Negaverse? The evil Negaverse come to steal all your energy and enslave your world? That Negaverse? Just come back later. Lucas, you okay? Everybody else was yelling. Let's just regroup, guys. Really? Really? Oh my Nega god. I better be getting a raise for this Jedi. This is just gonna keep happening, isn't it? This enigma from Mystery Alaska is our resident game journalist, as he writes reviews for the Northern Light newspaper. Everyone, please welcome DQP. Slowly but surely, the world of video games is moving into a fully digital age. It's not hard to see. We've all spent that week throwing our money at a Steam sale or deciding to stay in and just download a digital copy of a major retail release instead. More and more games these days don't even have that retail release, opting for a system of purely digital distribution. You won't be able to walk into a store and buy cartridges or discs of these games, so you'll just have to settle with connecting to the internet and watching the percentages slowly crawl up. And hey! Sometimes that wait for the download is worth it and makes a great game feel that much better. The nominees for best downloadable game are... Dive Kick. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Poker Knight 2. And The Stanley Parable. Best downloadable game. And the winner is... Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. 
The decision to have the Ace Attorney franchise go purely digital in the West may continue to be questioned, but it shouldn't matter, as long as we keep getting these great games. The runner-up was The Stanley Parable. Last year's win in this category was Journey. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies is nominated five times tonight, and this is its first win. You know, I'm glad we skipped the awards show this year. I'd rather be spending the evening in the company of a few good friends than some fancy pants shindig that won't even let me in just because I kept getting flagged by the metal detectors. Here, oh, here. Sure. Speaking of which, what did you guys pick for your personal game of the year? Oh, that's easy. GTA 5. I ain't never seen a better representation of what it's like to live my life. Cruising the streets, running from the popo, doing the jobs ain't no one else got the balls for. Ted, you live in a magical world inside the TV and fight manifestations of people's id. You're just jealous of my swag, admit it. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. Anyway, I've got to give it to Metal Gear Rising. I mean, the combat is great and all, but for some reason I like Raiden as a protagonist a lot. Not sure why, really. Maybe it's because you guys have so much in common. What? Nah, no way. I mean, Raiden's the guy who became a soldier as a kid and got in a really bad situation trying to bring someone back, which resulted in a bunch of his body parts being replaced with metal analogs, and wow, I actually felt that argument die as it was leaving my mouth. Oh, oh, my turn! Let me guess. Y'all are gonna pick something kitty with smiles and balloons and crap on the cover, am I right? Actually, I was going to pick The Last of Us because of all of its technical artistry and gorgeous atmosphere coupled with an emotionally gripping story told through brilliant vocal performances. Wow, Pinky, that's actually a pretty well-reasoned argument. Wait for it! But I decided to pick Weed Party U instead because it has party in the name! Saw that coming! Incidentally, Mario Party Island Tour is number three! <sighs> of course it is. How about you, Sonic? You've been awful quiet. Did you play any good games this year? I don't want to talk about it. Sorry, what was that? I said I don't want to talk oh, about yeah, it! What the hell? Dude, dude, are you okay? You don't look too good. I don't even know what happened! I had nothing but positive press and previews all year, then the game drops and everyone gives up! Where did it all go so wrong? Let's see, the broken parkour system, the overabundant gimmick stages, the media... Uh, 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 oh boy! Hey bartender, another round! Looks like we're gonna be here a while! Our next presenter might as well be the next voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. After all, his voiceover talent extends beyond that role to other characters over at Sonic Paradox. Everyone, please welcome Game Buddy. It takes a skilled writer to build a convincing character, but it takes an equally skilled performer to bring that character to life. As video games strive to create a more engaging narrative experience with cinematic cutscenes, motion capture animation, and extensive dialogue, actors are more important than they've ever been in video games. Whether they play a focal character in the game's story or merely provide quick voice clips around the occasional cutscene, a great voice actor is key to complete what could become a beloved icon. The nominees for Best Voice Acting Performance are Courtney Draper as Elizabeth Comstock from Bioshock Infinite. This is where you start moralizing, Booker. You forget. I know you. I'm not going to let you kill him. Really? Booker? What are you going to do to stop me? Not a damn thing. Laura Bailey as Marth from Fire Emblem Awakening. I'm about to save your life from him. I trust this proof will suffice. Ellen McLean as GLaDOS from Poker Night 2. Hey, where'd my money go? To a pleasant upstate farm where it has room to play with all its currency friends. The robot from Pandora is out of chips. I might as well say it now. I've always loved you, baby. Were I outfitted with a dry heave subroutine, I'd activate it now. And Kevin Brighting as the narrator from The Stanley Parable. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Best voice acting performance. And the winner is... Kevin Brighting, The Stanley Parable. As the only voice in Stanley's world, Kevin's dulcet tones, matched with clever writing, provided a truly memorable narrative performance. 
The runner-up was Courtney Draper as Elizabeth Comstock from Bioshock Infinite. Last year's win in this category was Martin Sheen as the elusive man from Mass Effect 3. The Stanley Parable is nominated seven times tonight, and this is its second win. Our next presenter aspires to work in the game industry, either through art or design. Meanwhile, you can find him broadcasting on Twitch. Everyone, please welcome Solid Snake 120. Input 1, all in one. Magic meets science. Beta tested in the future. Okay, so maybe the slogans didn't make any sense. But Microsoft still had a lot to be excited about this year. There's a 360 went out with a bang. The Xbox One hit the ground running with some stellar games to keep people connected live. A devilish adventure with a re-envisioned classic. The gritty story of an assassin on the high seas. The latest in a wacky post-apocalyptic power fantasy. The biggest budget game ever made. And a revival of an old rareware classic. Over 46 million people are connected online. And they've got as much of a reason as ever to be excited for what comes next. The nominees for Best Xbox 360 or Xbox One Game are... Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Dead Rising 3 DMC Devil May Cry Grand Theft Auto 5 and Killer Instinct. Best Xbox 360 or Xbox One game. And the winner is... Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It was a pirating adventure for Edward Kenway, as well as for players whose faith in the franchise was redeemed on the high seas. The runner-up was Grand Theft Auto 5. Last year's win in this category was Borderlands 2. This is Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag's only nomination tonight, and it's only win. Hello and welcome to the Show Me Your News Network Game of the Year show. That is a lot of words that become an acronym as S-M-Y-N-N-G-O-T-Y show. I am Super, host of Superfluous on the Show Me Your News Network. Superfluous is the spoiler-tastic show full of discussion and tangents and everything you know and love without any of the footsies around the issues. That's right, we talk about how Ares dies, and Optimus Prime dies, and that guy dies, and everyone dies, and everyone gets to die! You play The Walking Dead? I can tell you right now, someone dies. Probably a lot of people, and it's going to be your fault. You play A Link Between Worlds? I bet Ganon dies. Mario 3D World? Did you know that Bowser stole something or kidnapped someone? I bet they did. And let's not forget Bioshock Infant, where I bet there's a twist and the writer commits out of fellatio. And who knew that Marth was really Martha? That's right, such truth bombs and riveting discussion happen on Superfluous whenever it uploads. And spoilers, you've run over at least 10 hookers in Grand Theft Auto V. Now, back to the show. Super Flouse. When he's not studying video game history, you'll find him rocking out on keyboard in a band. Everyone, please welcome Psycho Wing X9. An industry as large and rapidly growing as ours, sometimes coming up with a brand new original idea is a massive risk. The reason why we have such an overflow of sequels among games is because those are the games that are guaranteed to make money. With this in mind, we should always throw a little extra respect towards those that took the risk and created something different. Whether these ideas were a product of established AAA developers, had the backing of one of the most influential animation studios in the world, or was simply a mod John standalone game at last, let's give these ideas a salute as they strive for bringing a bit more variety to our medium. The nominees for Best New Intellectual Property are... Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. The Last of Us. Stanley Parable. 
and the wonderful 101. Best new IP. And the winner is... The Wonderful 101. The action-filled Platinum Games title may have not had the best sales, but its quality on Wii U is undeniable. The runner-up was Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Last year's winner in this category was Sleeping Dogs. This is the Wonderful 101's only nomination tonight, and its only win. He was the host of SSX Ubercast, and he's currently working on the Kickstarter game Read Only Memories. Everyone, please welcome Charmy. Sometimes game series can go on for longer than they should. Sequels can become tiresome, tedious, or tasteless. Other times, a company may try to reinvent a series so that it's more user-friendly to new audiences, and then they end up sacrificing worthy aspects. Perhaps it's been an eternity since the last installment and the IP rights changed to another team, so it could just be downright butchered. With shaking hands, the longtime fan booted up the game to find, to their surprise, that all that worry and doubt was for naught. The nominees for Most Pleasant Surprise are... Animal Crossing New Leaf Fire Emblem Awakening Sly Cooper Thieves in Time and The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds Most Pleasant Surprise and the winner is Fire Emblem Awakening. This category is meant to be for games that exceeded fan expectations, and with how well Awakening did critically, it did just that. The runner-up was Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time. Last year's winner in this category was Nintendo Land. Fire Emblem Awakening is nominated nine times tonight, and this is its third win. Show me news! Now, coming for your speakers and into your ears, it's the gaming podcast that you all know and love. It's Show Me News! Your favorite Super Smash Bros. Brawl podcast from 2007 continues to cover the latest in the video game industry at ShowMeYourNews.com. Now, let's join the show. Hello and welcome to Show Me Your News Mini Edition 2014. Joining me today is a puppet I made out of a sock and a googly eye I found outside. Say hi, Saki. That's fantastic. Let's get right into our top stories. First up is Zelda. Yes, she is returning once again. The interesting thing is that one of her updates shows her in the picture very much how she was posed as Sheik previously. What does this mean for her? We don't know. Licensing with Marvel has fallen through for Capcom, and a lot of their digital services have now gone. Yes, Deadpool and other Marvel games have disappeared off of digital services. You can still find them in brick and mortar, but for how long is anyone's guess? Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Taxes were pulled from GOG.com, as Bethesda has now claimed all rights as of January 1st, 2014. Out recently is Dr. Luigi and Max, the Curse of Brotherhood. And lastly, for our soapbox, we have Apex is coming. Seriously, Apex is coming. Three Show Me Your News members, including myself, are going. It's gonna be hype. And on that, it's time to end. This concludes episode 150 of Show Me Your News. But we're going to keep it going with the Show Me Your News Network Game of the Year Awards. I am Super, and I am out. Find out more about this show and other podcasts at the Show Me Your News Network, where you can embrace your inner nerd over at ShowMeYourNews.com. Fans can interact with other stinjas at the friendliest community on the net at ShowMeYourNews.com slash forum. Show Me News! Greetings, trainers, young and old. The Kalos region welcomes you with open arms as you begin your journey once again. New creatures, new locations, and new friends bring an already beloved series into 3D for the first time, introducing a new type for the first time since 1998, and adding the concept of mega evolutions for some species. This installment changed these games as we knew them and shook up the way we'll play the franchise for years to come. Join your new friends as you attempt to once again earn the eight gym badges across the land, but beware evil team flair is up to no good. What could their motivation be, and what does it have to do with the legend of the ancient war? The fourth nominee for Show Me Your News Game of the Year. This is Pokemon X and Y.
While he tinkers with cars and co-hosts WTF Pokemon, you may notice how he sounds like Yoko. Well, that's because they're brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sword Hunter. How many games were released this year? 200? Maybe more? Games are expensive, not to mention time-consuming. If you manage to play just one game a month, you're already ahead of the curve. With such a vast library to choose from, it's inevitable that some games are going to get glossed over or missed entirely by the masses. Too often do we discover this one game that no one has ever heard of, but we just know that everyone needs to play it. Whether we manage to succeed in spreading the word, or we just quietly move on to whatever comes next, these rare finds are the kinds of games that we'll never forget. The nominees for Most Underrated Game are... Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator Lego City Undercover Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time. Most underrated. And the winner is... Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator. The game is still having improvements made to it, but everyone who has wanted to experience the Starship Enterprise fantasy needs to play Artemis. The runner-up was Shin Megami Tensei 4. Last year's winner in this category was Tokyo Jungle. Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator is nominated three times tonight, and this is its first win. He's the original Melee Beast with Bowser, and he now owns both the growing Nintendo game collection, as well as his own company, 62-Bit Gaming. Everyone, please welcome Gimpy Fish. With some gaming consoles shifting their focus towards streaming television and other various utilities, it's always nice to know that one company is still putting all they've got into making great games. Like a big new adventure with microscopic creatures, a quick and challenging platformer with a limbless icon, an epic quest to fight colossal creatures the world over, a gorgeous return to the oceans over a lost kingdom, and a brand new Mushroom Kingdom adventure with a feline twist. We may not have seen too many games from Nintendo's latest system this year, but the ones we got sure made it worth the long waits. The nominees for Best Wii U Game are... Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate Pikmin 3 Rayman Legends Super Mario 3D World and The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD Best Wii U Game And the winner is... Super Mario 3D World Fans were at first disappointed that this game wasn't a Galaxy sequel but when those same fans now think it's the best 3D Mario title now that's something special the runner-up was The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. Last year's winner in this category was Xenoblade Chronicles. This is Super Mario 3D World's only nomination tonight, and its only win. Playing, playing, I'm just surveying All these games and it has me saying Voting, voting, did we all get it right? Right? Cause there's Tomb Raider, Raider How can you hate her? As for Gone Home, it is meant for greater Just forgotten, invisible like rain Rain. Well, I just wish we could go back one more time and replay it Back before these games got snubbed and I, and I played it We got stuck for too long, we read the rules wrong Player one dies, and it impacts what I like We should stop this and I must insist that these games weren't loved enough The 
these games weren't loved enough Stuck for too long We read the rules wrong Getting last place Or you just give the story hate We should stop this and I must insist that these games weren't loved enough These games weren't loved enough Beyond two souls, two souls Ellen's mo-capped role Those two brothers And their tale with one goal Swapper, swapper You must admit you missed it You, you missed it Well, I just wish we could go back one more time And replay it Back before these games got snubbed And I, and I played it We got stuck for too long We read the rules wrong Player one dies And it impacts what I like We should stop this And I must insist that these games weren't loved enough These games weren't loved enough Stuck for too long Oh, we read the rules wrong Getting last place Or you just give the story hate We should stop this And I must insist that these games were loved enough These games were loved enough Don't you like it? Did you play this at all? Playing, playing, I'm just surveying Don't you like it? Did you play this at all? Playing, playing, I'm just surveying We read the rules wrong Player one dies And it impacts what I do We like. should stop this And I must insist that these games weren't loved these enough games were These games weren't loved these enough, were loved enough. Stuck for too long We read the rules wrong Getting last Get place last We just did the story hate We should stop this like And it? I must insist that these games weren't Don't loved enough These games all. weren't loved enough Playing. I'm just surveying all these games and we did the right thing. He's an Apple enthusiast who knows all about weaving narratives, as he has one in progress on the SMYM forums. Everyone, please welcome Kind King 01. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be back here at the SMYN Game of the Year Awards. You know what I love most about gaming? The stories. Every game has a story. Heck, even Super Mario Bros. had a story. Sure, it was simple and you could only get the whole thing by reading the instruction booklet, but the point is, it had a story. Games and stories, they go hand in hand. As time has gone by, we've only figured out more and more ways to tell these stories. Now, writing for a game is not easy. It's so different compared to writing a book or even a movie. Yet writers from all over the world have taken up the challenge, and gaming now has so many stories to choose from. Some great, and some, well, well not so great. <laughs> These are the tales of the first variety. The nominees for best story in a game are... Bioshock Infinite. Fire Emblem Awakening. The Last of Us, and The Stanley Parable. Best Story. And the winner is... Bioshock Infinite. Booker and Elizabeth's journey to escape Columbia had its twists and turns, and while some may complain about the gameplay, few can knock the narrative. The runner-up was Fire Emblem Awakening. Last year's winner in this category was The Walking Dead. Bioshock Infinite is nominated eight times tonight, and this is its third win. He's just living the dark life in the city that never sleeps. Everyone, please welcome Moptar. Next time you're playing a game, I want you to do something that most people would call stupid. I want you to close your eyes and listen. 
Listen to the music that's accompanying your experience. Truly listen to it. From the quiet tunes of a forest to the loud, energetic drums of a battle. Music is a diverse and wonderful part of this medium. We've come a long way from old NES sound chips that could usually only process three tones at a time. Music in games has become orchestrated and grand. A good soundtrack can make the 13th Zubat you've encountered in the past hour feel like a tense and powerful moment. It can enhance the already awesome experience of riding a dragon across a gorgeous landscape, make you feel like this is truly an important battle as you fight for the fate of the entire world, and much more. Without music, games just wouldn't be quite the same. The nominees for best soundtrack in a game are Fire Emblem Awakening Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix Ni no Kuni Wrath of the White Witch and Pokemon X and Y Best Soundtrack And the winner is Fire Emblem Awakening from solemn tunes to choral battle themes, Awakening's musical selections had it all, with an impressive quality for a 3DS game. The runner-up was Pokemon X and Y. Last year's win in this category was Rhythm Heaven Fever. Fire Emblem Awakening is nominated nine times tonight, and this is its fourth win. Now, the Show Me Your News Game of the Year awards are meant to highlight the best that gaming has to offer. But what about the other side of the spectrum? That's right, you know what time it is. I'm Yoko, and SMYN Top 10 presents the Top 10 Worst Games of 2013. Coming in at number 10 is Star Trek, the video game. This sloppy, glitchy mess turned out to be a completely uninspired third-person shooter, whose other game influences consistently fail to live up to the source. While the use of the likenesses and voices of the movie's actors is a plus, this game needs to hit the warp drive out of your system. Coming in at number 9 is Loco Cycle. Not even Lisa Foyles as the voice of an artificially intelligent motorcycle could save this hideous Xbox One launch title. Dull, repetitive gameplay, cheesy humor, rough next-gen graphics, it almost makes getting dragged unwillingly by a bike seem preferable. Coming in at number 8 is MLB 2K13. You know how sports video games often have that undue stigma about just being roster updates from year to year? Sadly, this game was exactly that. Roster update, removal of online leagues, and still a $60 price point. Strike 3, you're out. Coming in at number 7 is Aliens Colonial Marines. This won our most disappointing game award for a reason. When you have a great demo and trailer associated with a classic franchise like Aliens, then after some internal development controversy, the final product was this dreadful? Felt just like being impaled by a xenomorph. Coming in at number 6 is Girl Fight. Take a lousy, clunky fighter inspired by Dead or Alive with only 8 female characters that have uninspired, similar designs. You guessed it, the cleavage factor is the only reason this tripe exists. Honestly, if you want the concept of an all-female fighter, Skullgirls is right there. Coming in at number 5 is The Walking Dead, Survival Instinct. It's so terribly sad that when you say The Walking Dead game, you have to clarify that you mean The Telltale game instead of this garbage. Yes, the TV show is popular, but an ugly, messy first-person shooter is clearly not the best way to experience the walker threat. Coming in at number 4 is NBA Live 14. Imagine if your rival game put out a gorgeous trailer online, but then the next day you revealed your trailer and it's a total stinker by comparison. After seeing what the final game played like, this was unacceptable and yet sadly predictable for the few years of development in the troubled Live series. Airball! Coming in at number 3 is Fighter Within. The new Kinect on Xbox One is much better than the original, sure, but when it still hasn't delivered on the device's initial visions, why do developers think a fighting game without a controller is a good idea? As you can guess, the debacle that is Fighter Within illuminates this perfectly. 
just try to look normal playing this. Coming in at number 2 is Ride to Hell Retribution. Between its three platforms, this game has an average Metacritic score of 16. 16! Do you realize how crazy that is? That is the lowest rated game in Steam's entire library. Watch any video review and you'll see how broken, immature, glitchy, and unplayable this is. But at least it's not the culmination of a troubling industry trend. Alright, in case you forgot already, here's a quick recap. Number 10, Star Trek The Video Game. Number 9, Loco Cycle. Number 8, MLB 2K13. Number 7, Aliens Colonial Marines. Number 6, Girl Fight. Number 5, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Number 4, NBA Live 14. Number 3, Fighter Within. And number 2, Ride to Hell Retribution. And the number 1 worst game of 2013, according to the SMYN Network, is Final Fantasy All the Bravest. It plays off of nostalgia with its retro visuals, sure, but in the worst possible way. It is inexplicable, absurd, and downright insulting for this mobile game to be as microtransaction heavy as it is. The game plays itself as you mindlessly and endlessly swipe across the screen, while it ruthlessly concocts ways to attempt to part you from your money. This cash grab is the show me your news, all the worst game of 2013. And that's it, the top 10 worst games of 2013. If you want to create your own top 10 list about any nerdy topic you'd like, you can learn more at showmeyournews.com slash top T-E-N. With that, let's get back to the show. She takes on many roles in the SMYN community. Fan, artist, wife, and most importantly, mother. Everyone, please welcome Sugar Poultry. For a gamer, everything starts with the trailer. Sure, you may have generated some excitement when you read about the announcement or when the game was casually mentioned in an interview, but more often than not, that first spark of hype took place when you watched the trailer. A good trailer can cause you to run out and pre-order the game immediately because did you see that? That looks amazing! Sadly, a trailer is just a trailer, and an epic one may hide a rather lackluster game. But for those brief moments, that little video which lasts a few minutes might have made you the happiest you've ever been. The nominees for Best Game Trailer are... Kingdom Hearts 3 Reveal Trailer I am who I am because of them. Project M 3.0 Trailer Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. Debut trailer. And Monolith Soft's X. Debut trailer. Best Game Trailer. And the winner is... Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. Some of these may have been more surprising or technically impressive, but in a community founded with a passion for Smash Bros., it's hard to top this. The runner-up was Kingdom Hearts 3. Last year's winner in this category was Watch Dogs. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS is nominated two times tonight, and this is its first win. Since we surfed on the right side of Cinnabar Island, after our next presenter speaks, you might want to check the sixth item in your inventory. The creator of the SMYN RPG demo, everyone, please welcome Missing No. Sometimes there's just that one song that gets lodged in your brain. It plays over and over in your head until it comes dangerously close to driving you crazy. It's these tunes that stand out among already fantastic soundtracks, and 2013 was a year of diverse music, which you can see from the nominees we have here tonight. In this category alone, we see a cover of an old pseudo-hymnal, an epic theme of war, the tense music of a battle with a villain, and a song meant only to represent the idea of survival. 
These songs are notable for going above and beyond the other tracks that accompanied them, becoming the ones that you'll never forget. After all, your brain just won't let you. The nominees for best song in a game are... Will the Circle Be Unbroken from Bioshock Infinite. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, by and by. Id Purpose from Fire Emblem Awakening. <laughs> Versus Team Flare Boss from Pokemon X and Y. <laughs> And main theme from The Last of Us. Best song. And the winner is Fire Emblem Awakening! Another very strong list of nominees where each deserved to win, but the Fire Emblem track creates a soundtrack and song combo win for the game. The runner-up was Bioshock Infinite. This is a new category this year. Fire Emblem Awakening is nominated nine times tonight, and this is its fifth win. Welcome to What Are You Playing, where we tell you the titles we're working through. Be they old or be they new, listen, learn, and ask a question or two. It is the Show Me Your News Game of the Year Awards for 2013, and even though What Are You Playing ended as a show, halfway through this year we still continue on in the Show Me Your News podcast. That is true. We wanted to keep the memory alive by covering the top five games, or the top favorite games we played. Not so far the best, but the top five favorite games we played this year. Yeah, and a lot of you know YouTube personalities, they're doing their top ten you know, best games of the year. Well, these are the games that we've played this year. They don't have to be from 2013. These aren't 2013 release games. Our top five favorite games, period. And we're going to start with Tony TH, who is sick and cannot make the show this evening. But he still sent along his list for us to critique. I mean, for us to review. So it starts at number five with Rayman Legends. It's a good game. I, I would debate that that's one of the ten best games this year if I had to make a list mm. like that. Uh, eh, but as a part of the top five, I've not really played it outside of playing one demo, falling off the same cliff five times, and saying, screw it, this isn't the game for me. But at least for a platformer, it regenerates quickly, doesn't rely on lives. You gotta like that. Number four, Sonic Lost World. Surprised to see that on the list. Well, Tony is a person with a lot of wrong opinions. I mean, uh, <laughs> he's t he's a person who has strange... He likes Shadow, okay? I think that says enough right there. He'll have to defend that when he's here later. Number three, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I'm okay with this idea. It's not the dark of the moon like Transformers, but it was still a good game this year. It was a fantastic game, and up until that last holiday rush, it was definitely a contention for game, my game of the year. Number two, Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus. Tony is an unabashed Ratchet and Clank fan, and it's good to apparently they made an enjoyable game this year. Yeah, it's nice to see them come back, because I still think Sony's hurting for real, you know, mascots, because, you know, you got Nathan Drake, sort of, but mm -hmm. Kratos, sometimes I forget he's... Sackboy. They don't have one defining one, yeah. Yeah, it's not nothing to define them is what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. And in his number one favorite game of this year is Super Mario 3D World. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. He just got a Wii U this holiday, so yes, he did. It's uh, like that. Like well, he like Lost World on there as well, the Wii U version. 3D World, pretty fun. It sure is. Well, what about your top five favorite game, Super? My top five favorite games that I played this year starts off with Fire Emblem Awakening. Good game, good game. It was a fantastic game, and 
I played the hell out of it. It's for so many hours. It's gotta be over 100, uh, right? Oh, yes. Uh, the next one would be Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Just barely beating out Fire Emblem. Actually, nearly everything on this list is from 2013 because I haven't had that much time to play even old games. Hmm. Uh, but Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, definitely a really good game. Following that one up, though, would be the Super Mario 3D World. Did have a chance and an opportunity to play this. We got through two worlds right off the bat. And it was very fun. It's a little so tricky that, with multiplayer, but it really excels as a single player game. I'd imagine that uh, entirely. And, you know, I'd imagine it being really, really good at four players. Number two, Legend of Zelda, Link Between Worlds. Oh, great game. Uh, it was fantastic. I had so much fun. I just loved having all the items available to me, solving puzzles the way I want to solve them, and sometimes not in the way they were intended. I could do this, this, and this with this item, or I could throw a bomb and run! You know, and the only gripe is that it might be too short and the bosses are too easy, but then you say, well, there's hero mode. It mm. kind of changes things. It's a really well done game. I just can guess your number one favorite game this year. It's Project Dare! Yeah. Yeah, it's so fun. I'm playing a good Sonic now. I am loving Roy. Meta Knight's not changed from 2.6, which was fantastic. Oh my god, I love it. I'm going to Apex to play more of it. Hey, Yoko, oh. how about you tell me your top five, because I've gushed about this enough. Hype for Apex. My top mm. five favorite games. I think I only have two... No, oh, two games. Two games this year from 2013. And one of them comes in number five. It's Beyond Two Souls. Um, David Cage games are very polarizing. I'm one who enjoys them. Granted, they are weird controls. They're not always the best games. But with the cinematic level of quality and how the graphics look and the stories, it's very interesting. I played through the game twice, one on solo and one on co-op, and it was fun both times, so I really enjoyed that. Number four, Okami. Uh, oh. Obviously, it was, the, it was the Okami HD version, but it's still a great Zelda-like experience, and if you're a fan of the Legend of Zelda franchise, you need to play Okami. I'm because it's to a, do it eventually. <laughs> it's a very interesting experience to compare the two. And you know, I know Tony and I were gushing about that when we were going through our playthroughs. Uh, number three is last year's Game of the Year award winner. Number three, Telltale's The Walking Dead. Um, I still have to get to episode one of season two, even though I've purchased it, but producing this show comes before playing that game. So I'm looking forward to getting to season two, but there's a reason it won our Game of the Year award last year. Well, the Walking Dead from Telltale is fantastic. Number two, my personal game of the year is The Last of Us. Just okay. the quality that Naughty Dog does, the storytelling, the characters, the acting in that game is fantastic for a video game standard. And some people may not like the stealth aspect. It's not a fun game at all. It's not meant to be a fun game. It is a brutal game. It is difficult. It was very frustrating at points, but I think the overall experience uh, was something I really enjoyed this year, and that's why I think The Last of Us is my personal game of the year if I had to pick for 2013. It's not supposed to be a fun game. I think I might find fun in that. I, th I think you like it, but that that involves PS3 or, you know, Gaikai eventually on PS4. That's a whole other thing altogether. We're going to wait on that one. Yeah. My number one favorite game that I played this year was Zero Project Escape. Game. Zero oh. Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Um... This is a game that is very, very complicated in its story. Uh, the gameplay makes you think when you're into these rooms and you have to try to escape. Uh, but it's all about character, it's all about story, and the complexity. You think you know, Bioshock Infinite had a mind-blowing ending? No. I will sing the praises of the game Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward and its ending, because that is something else, and they set up the third game the trilogy because the nine hours nine persons nine doors game came before it the sequel which is probably upcoming in the next couple of years sometime cannot wait for that so glad i got into that series well that's our top five favorite games this year from the show me your news and what are you playing team ah it's unfortunate that Tony couldn't make it out for this one you still got that that hangover that, that party Yes. Yeah, from the space camp. And and he also got a, a ride to space, that's right. Being mm -hmm. sick in space, that's that's not fun. 
Why do you think he's sick? He's in space. Hedgehogs yes. don't belong in space. All makes sense now. Well, we hope you look forward to 2014 in gaming. With that, I'm Yoko. I'm Super. And let's get back to the show. A mutated strain of Cordyceps fungus has racked the brains of most of the population, spreading like wildfire. Joel and his brother managed to escape the frantic throngs filled with innocent people and tainted victims, but at a terrible cost. Twenty years later, the world is barely held together from the epidemic, as the military tries to keep things intact. Joel has become cold, distant, and is always looking out for number one. That is, until his life is turned upside down when he is tasked with transporting a young girl by the name of Ellie across the states to the resistance group known as the Fireflies. Themes of loyalty, sacrifice, family, and loss surround you as Joel comes to terms with his past and realizes how far he's willing to go to protect what little he has left in this broken world. The fifth and final nominee for Show Me Your News Game of the Year, this is The Last of Us. our next presenter ever owned a dog by himself, which happened to be legendary in yellow, we'd have a pretty good guess at what he would name it. Everyone, please welcome Exo Ryko. In an industry that is constantly evolving and developing new ideas and technologies, we often find ourselves wondering what's going to come next. Over the next year, we can expect to see a kick-started revival of a fan-favorite concept, the most extensive mod of a console game ever, a cross-platform crossover smash-up, and an intriguing game about hacking anything and everything that you can see. And just think, these are just a few of the great things that the year of 2014 plans to bring us. Will they be Game of the Year contenders, or get pulled in with next year's biggest disappointments? All we can say for sure is that it's going to be another interesting year. The nominees for most anticipated game are... Mighty number no. 9. Project M. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. And Watch Dogs. Most anticipated. And the winner is... Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and the 3DS. While this may have seemed like a no-brainer to this community of Smash fans, the voting was closer than you'd think. The runner-up was Watch Dogs. Last year's winner in this category was Pikmin 3. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS is nominated two times tonight, and this is its second win. And that was an amazing montage of Yoko's time at Space Camp. Alright, on to the next bit of the show as we wind down. And, uh, what is that? There, evil, show me news, we're here, Negaverse. Give us your energy, blah, blah, blah. Where is security? Nega. Scum. And why aren't they all fired? Moon, prism, power! Oh my god, they're naked. On stage. They're all over 18, right? We are the Sailor Scouts of Moon Prism Power Hour, the champions of justice, in the name of Neptune! In the name of Pluto, which is no longer a planet of what we will pretend it is, I'll punish you! In the name of Mars, I will right wrongs and triumph over evil. Makiri no karat, oshiokyo! 
Wait, what? I mean, in the name of Jupiter, that means you. We are the warriors of love and justice, and I'm afraid you've met your match, nigga trash. We'll see about that, Sailor Brats! <laughs> Wait, are they back? I'm strangely okay with this. All this build-up had better been worth it, I swear. What's the plan of action, Sailor Scouts? I could roast it with my fire. Or strike it with my lightning. I actually don't know what my po what powers my sailor has. She hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, same. So now what? Wait a minute, I've got this. I know how to win the fight. How? I'm the biggest expert on the one unbeatable move. I've seen it done a million times, probably more. How did you see it so many times? Do you know how many fucking times I have to watch every single sequence when I'm editing? I've got this. Whatever, just do it. Take it away, Sailor Sony Vegas. Tiara Magic! No! No! No need to thank us, show me your news. We're merely doing our job. Don't worry, we weren't going to. Sailor Scouts! Now what? Tuxedo Fangs! Remember, Moon Prism Power Hour? Believe in yourselves, and there's nothing you can't do! Wow, thanks, Tuxedo Fangs! Wait, she just left? Tuxedo Fangs is so dreamy. D do you think Tuxedo Fangs would go on a date with me? You're all, you're all like silly lovesick frogs just waiting for a fly to fly into your mouth. We should get out of here too before this bit starts to get old. Yeah, we reached that point like two minutes ago. Right! Farewell, show me your news! If the Negaverse ever shows its ugly face again, you know who to call. Ghostbusters! He hosts the network show Superfluous and is one of the co-hosts of Show Me Your News. On that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Super. It's a sad fact of life that if most of us were put up against the often unrealistic dangers of a video game, said dangers would likely make quick work of us. Unless, of course, you're a trembling little plumber. That's why we have our heroes. These are the characters that step up to the challenge. Even if that challenge could, and probably did, technically end their existence over and over again. Tonight we honor these heroes. A modern-day Rapunzel with the ability to transcend reality. The often overlooked brother of a much more famous icon. A lawyer who's been absent from the spotlight for nearly ten years. And a little girl who could very well be the key to humanity's survival. These are the heroes that stepped up because nobody else could. The nominees for Protagonist of the Year are... Elizabeth Comstock from Bioshock Infinite. I'm a friend. Come to get you out get of here. Get away! <gasps> Are you real? I'm real enough. He's coming. You, you've got to go. Luigi, from Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. Whoa. Huh? Whoa. Phoenix Wright, from Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. These are dark times, where the law has been reduced to rubble, and it's up to us to restore it to its former glory. Time to bring it to an end. Ellie, from The Last of Us. It's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How... How the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Protagonist of the year. And the winner is... Luigi from Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. 
It's debatable if Luigi was the best character in a game this year, but Nintendo's marketing department certainly helped make it his year to win. The runner-up was Elizabeth Comstock from Bioshock Infinite. Last year's winner in this category was Herschel Layton from Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask. This is Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon's only nomination tonight, and its only win. We've covered bits from across the SMYN Network show so far, but we can't forget the podcast that started it all. Before we present the final award for the evening, we'd like to present this compilation of Show Me Your News Moments from 2013. I have to talk to my future self for next year. Cool your jets on Steam sales, bro. Seriously, um, I got overall 22 <laughs> games. 22 games. Like you have a you have a big enough backlog already. What the hell are you doing? I know, I know, it's a great deal, but hold on and don't buy so many games. Now I'm thinking about the uh, the gamepad as like a first person kind of view, and then I'm thinking like Pokemon Snap Two would be so great. Oh yep. my god, I've been bitching about that on Twitter for like ever. Especially Wouldn't it be the best. Especially what pissed me off. Was in that in that feed? They go like, oh, in the new Pikmin game, <laughs> yeah. you can take pictures of the Pikmin. Like, that, yeah. like that's great. How about we do that for Pokemon Snap too? And then she starts giving out all these reasons why she likes Snorlax, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense with the contents of the games. She's talking strictly out of the anime. Hmm. And I'm just kind of like, oh, she's an anime. She liked the anime. Okay. Well, you know, you should look up this thing called WTFP, and she just kind of gives me this look. I'm like, what? And she's just like, I already know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? From Brian2799. Yeah. Maybe they got him confused with Obama. <laughs> Maybe they did, Brian2799. <laughs> Maybe they did. Ubisoft releases a video game with evil George Washington. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, thanks, Obama. <laughs> By the way, screw Cliff Blazinski or whatever his name is. Uh, he is Mark probably the most off. <laughs> he is the most off base. Like, thank you, thank you for getting that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Because that's like the big holdup in the games industry is that the parents don't know anything. Yeah, I'll buy my kid Call of Duty. He's ten years old. What do I care? I don't know anything. What is that? M M for mucho cool. Great game. I like that. Cool. I do too. That's a Not good one, dude. For, mm, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, the bear jokes was like we we started doing it at first, and and people like you know in the episode of Banjo Kazooie, everyone was like kind of enjoying it, and then by the end of the episode, they were obsessed with it. And our goal was we wanted to see how long it would take for us to upset our audience, and we we never that did. Timer's we, still going. <laughs> it's still going. What? Game demos on the eShop. I know, I know. It's probably really difficult and you might not do it, but if you want a way to turn this around, have your floor demos go out on the eShop, even if it's for a week, even if it's for a few days. That's how you turn this around and try to cater it to the fans. That's 100% agree. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that they haven't done this before. Oh, sorry. I had to mute for a second because reasons. Sorry. Uh, Did strippers show up at your house? Yeah, they broke again. my 3DS. Again. <laughs> they broke in the 3DS. I'm going to yeah. call this... Uh, they said that they were going to announce an old Rare franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll be Killer Instinct. By the way, I'm pretty sure before the... In the last episode, I said that the Xbox was going to go the multimedia way and not show any games mm -hmm. at the conference, so I did it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Super, you're saying the sports thing is like good for people who like sports. Yoko hates it. I, I don't care. You don't care? You don't I, like fantasy? I, I host a sports podcast. I do fantasy. I have a freaking smartphone. Yep. I want my screen to be full with the sports action. I don't want to watch replays that take me away from live action. I can look things up on my phone, which guess what? They have apps that update automatically. You want to do smart glass? Smart glass that shit. But who is yeah. the snake reveal, the, the surprise reveal at the end of the trailer, if it happens? I'm going to say Mega Man, though. <laughs> I, I think, think so. the Capcom surprise is 
Mega Man is in Smash. Not necessarily a new game because they could show it at a you know, Microsoft or E3 or Sony E3 conference, but I, Mega Man in Smash sounds like. Mega Man, Mega Man! <laughs> <laughs> could, it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like you're gonna wait for the crowd oh, to die yeah. down, and you're gonna hit them with another one. You know, it's, Look, that's it's like, that's like that's like a wrestling promo to me. It is yeah. purest. It's like yeah. you don't do this, and we're doing it. And I love wrestling, and I love crowd reactions. So that just I was like, yeah, Sony, drop another elbow, do it. The places that kind of like encourage like the dance floors, and they're trying to be clubs, but with like a bar twist to it. I'm getting too old for that shit. How you pick up the ladies, though? Yeah, I like to actually have conversations. I do too, I but no, I tried. And hey, what do you do? Oh, I know that. That I yeah. Got... What? I lean into you. That's not what? where you go to pick up a girl based on conversational skills. You need to go to a chill bar for that. Yeah. Yeah, you need to be a complete dog to be able to pick up girls in that setting. Just like yeah. grab one and start dancing. Screw that, it. That's what happens, though, and it, hopefully you're both drunk enough to not realize that, <laughs> you know. And hopefully you're both clean as well, so there you go. Wear a condom, kid. <laughs> From Show Me Your News. <laughs> Wear the glove. Wear the glove. I don't understand people who like cake more than pie. I don't get that. I like good. cake more. I like cake more than pie because, like, most fruit pies and stuff like that it makes me sick there's just mm. like there's the, the jelly sugar stuff just really gets to me where a cake is like it's light and fluffy and you know there's still sugar but you know it's contained in I, flour uh... and you know it's funny that all these people are throwing all the hate on it because like almost immediately nintendo released like a commercial promo thing where all they did was show kids younger than seven playing it i'm just kind of like there's all your proof you need that, this new model is for kids who won't break it on the hinges. I am Super, and I don't have a wallet anymore. I'm Tony, and I got another tooth put in my head. Yay. Wow, those are all both really depressing. No, no, and I got one put in. Put like, in, in your head? Yeah. Well, Titanium. It's... Drill. <laughs> in your mouth. Okay. Well, it's in my head. <laughs> yes? <laughs> But like, I, I wait, you didn't think he put it in skull. his mouth? I mean, someone had <laughs> where, a nose. Where's he, where's he gonna put another tooth? There's someone who got a nose installed on their forehead. I thought Tony That's was getting teeth in his head. That's mm. weird. It is weird. He wants weird. to eat with his eyes. <laughs> no, it's much better. I got an implant and now I got like perfect smile. So it's like, yeah. Like, it's funny because I evolved it and he like forgot how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're not right, Chu. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. That's pretty he, funny. He just kind of goes back to bzzz, and I'm like, yep. Bzzz. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is a good way to segue that Yoko's not here today. He's in space camp. He's in space camp, and uh, he couldn't make it stay. So, so he just told us to do it. Yeah, because he's in space. Yep. Just for today. Yeah. Just, just to one die. day. They flew him out, actually, this morning. Yeah. It was really... Uh, he, he, won a, he won some sweepstakes or something. I think the, the most damning evidence I've seen is if you look around, there's no Rosalina anywhere. Hmm. Meaning what? Meaning I wouldn't be surprised if we see Rosalina as a playable character. Or alternate costume. Or alternate costume, yes. They do have Save a Bowser that. ship and a Comet Observatory. Not the Comet Observatory, the, the Mario. Starship Mario. Starship Mario, yeah. The Comet Observatory is notably absent, you're right. While we're going into the 12th Doctor, he's actually going to be the 13th Doctor. And so, if the Valyard is supposed to be between the 12th and 13th regenerations, then where's the Valyard? Is that going to happen soon? I can see you just kind of throwing your hands in the air, because I'm trying to I'm trying to explain but to I, you. I still have rain matter leaking out of my ears, it's okay. I'm trying to explain I... to you 50 years worth of continuity in 5 minutes. Nintendo goes on stage and shows Cranky Kong in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which had leaked a few days earlier from the box art. That's it? <laughs> he's, he's not going to sell anything. He's really not going to sell anything. I mean, like, I see Cranky Kong, I'm like, that's the character I'm going to play. The two-player. 
You can even That's... see Jeff Keighley asking Reggie, like, oh, oh, is that it? Is there anything else you have for us? And you can kind of see the hope dying from his eyes. And that kind of represented, like, oh, maybe my program I've spent so long hyping is kind of just turning to very little right, right before me. With that, I'm Yoko. I'm Super. I'm Tony. And we're out. See ya. And now, to present the night's final award. He was the original co-host of Show Me Your News, and this coming year, he'll be moving to Arizona for continued work as a doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Samurai Panda. Super Mario Galaxy 2, Batman Arkham City, The Walking Dead. It's finally time for one of tonight's nominees to join these past winners, as it takes its place as the fourth Show Me Your News Game of the Year. These are large shoes to fill, and this award can't go to just any old game. What's more, like all these awards tonight, it was chosen by everyone who decided to vote. This is it, Spinjas. The moment of truth. Once more, the nominees for Show Me Your News Game of the Year are... Bioshock Infinite Fire Emblem Awakening Grand Theft Auto 5 Pokemon X and Y and The Last of Us. Game of the Year. And your twenty thirteen. Show Me Your News Game of the Year is... Fire Emblem Awakening Fire Emblem Awakening surprised us all not only by taking home the most awards tonight, but also the one that matters most. Not only is it our Game of the Year, but it also represented the revival of the 3DS platform this year. The runner-up was The Last of Us. Last year's win in this category was The Walking Dead. Fire Emblem Awakening was nominated nine times tonight, and this is its sixth win. That does it for the 2013 Show Me Your News Game of the Year Awards. I'd like to thank everyone who helped provide lines tonight, Rachel for announcing, Dark Ryan the Dobaga for their help writing, friends and family for their support, and everyone who helped with the creation of musical numbers or bits. That includes Gym Leader Ben, the Dobaga, Toon Lucas, Dark Rye, Sword Hunter, Super, Major Moses, Decaf78, Joel, and Cyberlink420. Everyone in the Show Me Your News community, you are the best. And you are why I put myself through this every year, to put on a great product that each and every Sminja can be proud of. I love you all. Anyway, we're going to close with one final musical number. So with that, for ShowMeYourNews.com, I'm Yoko, and we'll see you in 2014. Well, the end is here, the game of the year, and the show is great, it ran like a dream. But now we look towards the promising future with these new game machines. Xbox One, PS4, Wii U, new tech, better graphics, and everything else that is new. Oh, critics say that's what a backlog is for, it's a death trap. There's too much of this crap we're gonna download while we're young Cause we want to play these games and have some fun Press A to start Lightning's back again, 13 comes to win And Dracula will battle with Satan while Infamous found a second son And thieves the franchise were saving 
Donkey Kong's getting quite the freeze, it's so tropical. Jumping on Vikings with ease. How will you witness this Jonathan blow? Cause Dark Souls is just as tough as everyone knows, but yes, the sequel has it all. I wanna jump inside a mech and I wanna play some Titanfall. Oh, can I play it? Beyond the evil within called Blue Shells lies a Mario Kart. My soul suspect has been murdered and Watch Dogs is off the charts. The Inquisition yields a dragon age. Bungie's bringing you a true destiny. I know that the Division will bring a wild hunt, but that's for The Witcher 3. Huh. Ran Legacy and Herschel Layton's clash with Phoenix Wright. I know everyone needs some transistor, but I want Child of Light. The Phantom Pain has Keeper acting so punished, we gotta hear more from Monolith Soft's ex. Oh, ninjas, I know what you want. If Sakurai is on time, we'll have it this time next year, and we'll smash till we've won. But till then, we want to play these games and have some fun. Oh, Sminjas, we want to play these games and have some fun. Come on with me, we want to play these games and have some fun. fun. Oh, 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 oh,